All right, welcome to a very special edition of Outside the Box, and we're here tonight with Gordon Westfall from Sustainable Today, and he's also a host of many other shows at Portland Community Media. And Gordon and I are often talking about reality mm -hmm. in Portland, Oregon, and the energy in the city. And as we talk about the potential for civilization to collapse, uh, we look at our own history, and we have these conversations off air. The Native Americans that lived here before us, uh, the genocide that took place and the energy that still lingers. What can you share with us about those that were here in the Northwest before us? Well, I went to the Pendleton Yoga Roundup two weeks ago, and it was interesting to talk to some of the indigenous Americans that I was staying with on the reservation. And uh, we were talking, and during the Yoga Roundup, they had a number of indigenous Americans came to talk about the history of uh, Oregon and how uh, Lewis and Clark came in and what happened and how they developed and and how everything spread out and then Oregon City became the capital and what have you and I've always felt um, that society is holding on to a huge karmic debt I believe that society is going to pay until we recognize and deal with the atrocities that happened by removing and destroying all the indigenous Americans on this on this continent. And until we deal with that, we will no, never go nowhere because we're holding all that energy and we're still responsible for that even because we're not helping them. We're not doing anything. We're, we've we've minimalized, minimalized, minimal, um, we've marginalized them and um, we just have walked all over them. What I found is that it even goes farther and deeper than that to the West Coast or to the East Coast. I was talking to some indigenous Americans before and what, um, a, about a year ago and they told me, and I didn't even know this, and I was wondering why they got so upset about the Atlanta Braves and the Washington Redskins. I found out, do you know why they call them the Washington Redskins? No, why is that? This is so horrible. <clears throat> The white people, the Caucasian Europeans, came and they would take the children of the indigenous Americans in front of them and they would skin them and they would take their skin from the genitalia and the vulva and the penis of their bodies and they would make rubber bands for their hair and they would do that and for their clothing. They would also then, it became um, a, a practice where they would go and literally skin the indigenous Americans alive. Mm -hmm. They would cut them at the waist. They would strip their skin off. They would sell the skin to people in Washington, D.C. and on the East Coast, and they would actually wear them as clothing. It got to a point where it became, la they just laughed about it. It got to a point where the indigenous Americans just started laughing about it because they knew what was going on, and they they, they just started you know minim, you know trivializing it and just said you know what this is just you know we're not going to make anything of this. So it was really nasty. So what we're dealing with is a history mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with, and until we deal with that, we're never going to go again. We're not going to go anywhere. And looking at cities like Oregon City, for example, Oregon it's, City. it's beautiful on one level. On another level, for those of us that live in the Northwest, we've heard about a number of serial killers that have come out of Oregon City in some parts of Oregon. And you wonder about the energy that's still lingering there. Then we have Oregon City, the end of the Oregon Trail. Oh, and, and thinking about the, the, the energy, the, the desperation, what happened to the Indians before. <laughs> Well, and let's talk about the end of the Oregon Trail. It was literally the end of the trail for the indigenous American. Mm. Okay, not what they did, I found out from Pendleton, is they would take the indigenous Americans from Pendleton and all around the state and they would ship them to Oregon City and they would hang them. That's where they were crucified and killed in Oregon City. And then what's really interesting is you can see the energy of Oregon City. I lived in Oregon City. Don't, I like Oregon City. They're doing some great things, but there's sure. again a history that has to be dealt with. Okay? I feel the same way about St. John's. St. John's also has this energy and there's records of Indians that lived over there. There was some sort of a plague that came through the Willamette River. It makes me wonder if that plague that ended their world was maybe another bioweapon. I'm sure it probably was a bioweapon that was really not, you know, scientifically created. I mean, botulism, whatever they had, whatever they were using back then, or whatever they were sick. But what's interesting about Oregon City is I find uh, is funny is they put on the end of the Oregon Trail a dump, and that really signifies the city past. Mm -hmm. 
it is becoming a lively place. It's becoming a nice place, and uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, devalue Oregon City. It, you know, there's a number of good people there. There's a lot of good uh, sustainable projects coming out of Oregon City. But again, we have to go back to deal with what we've done to the Indigenous American. I, I didn't do it. You didn't do it. But we still live on their land, and we don't right. acknowledge their ownership or their their existence. And we really need to work hard to come to grips with what our 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 family members have done, and what we need to do is really put our hands out and try to start fixing things. Respect the spirits, so we can heal. And we have basically what we're seeing here is a pattern of a continuation of negative energy. If it isn't dealt with, it eventually affects our own society. When you look at Portland, it also has that Shanghai history to it as well. There's something about this city that's constantly been involved on some level throughout time of trafficking people. Well, and I find very interesting about this too is the, the, the energy about Portland. The energy about Portland, the magnetics is really heavy here, so it's hard to, um, um, if you are into meditations and spirituality, to get into the astral plane, to meditate and get into the spirit realm. So. I have talked to Yogi Bhajan before he was killed. There's Saint Dar Singh, the masters, some of these spiritual gurus and stuff. They're all Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. They don't like it up here because it's really hard. The magnetics up here, the electromagnetics, the mountain ranges, it's really difficult to be um, light, ask, you know, get into the spiritual realm. So they go south of the city where it's not so heavy, and I don't think the karma is so the uh, so heavy either. I've also read, you know, in Native American legends of going off in the desert for a vision quest because the energy isn't moving as intensely right. there. Where in Portland, I mean, you've got lots of energy coming from different places and lots of people from all over the world. So it's almost like a, a vortex of lots of energy, which can be good and bad. Because right. you've got... Right, and you know, I've been noticing the last couple of weeks the energy of the people. A lot of craziness going on, a lot of people that can't make right. up minds, a lot of indecision making, a lot of, a lot of frantic energy going on right now. I, I find it very disturbing uh, finding some of the strongest people I know in some of the weakest states of mind right now. So going back to, as we close this, because uh, you're a busy guy working on our show over here, but this is important to pause and kind of reflect on why things are going a certain direction. The karmic connection you think this country has the past, I also feel that way. How do you see that playing out in the future as the economy breaks down and uh, as we see more of this unraveling? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Whatever happened to them will happen to us. Until we figure out how to stop this, we, we are going to have to pay for the disturbance that happened way back when. We're, we're eventually going, it, it's all a cycle, it's all a circle. So we're all going to have to walk into that energy eventually, if we're not all wa already walking into it now. Just like if I was to say, you know, an F word and call you some kind of a, a bad name, I eventually will have to walk through that energy. You put it out there, you have to go through it as well as everybody else. Uh -huh. So, you know, we have, a real big, I think we're, all this energy of negativity and stress and, and um, um, sociopathic and, um, and just all this stuff is starting to build up and it's starting to build up and it's not releasing and it's building up. And, and I think if we don't start acknowledging what we've done inadvertently and, and start working with the people to help better some of these people's lives and, and start making a difference in some of the most, some of the people's lives. We're not going to go, again, we're not going to go anywhere until we understand what we've done before and what we're doing now and what we're saying and, and how we're acting. And, and really, it's really being responsible, taking on self-sufficiency, being more sustainable in our lifestyle without having to step on other people to get there. Mm. Capitalistic society, you step on people to get up to the top. That's how America was made. We stepped on the indigenous American to get to the top to take all the resources, and now we're paying for it. We made our bed, now we're gonna have to. Uh... We're gonna sleep in it <laughs> right. and die in it. Well, Gordon, it's been good talking about these things. I think we all should kind of think about our own area. People are watching this outside the United States as well. Europe has its own history. Whatever was done in the past lingers on until we clean it up. And look what we're doing to Africa. You exactly. Know? We really need to start thinking about other people other than just ourselves. Tell everybody watching briefly about your show, the websites so they can watch some of the stuff you produced. I produce a cable television show called uh, Sustainable Today. Go to westfalls.org and sustainabletoday.org and check out what we're doing with chocolate and television and goodness. All right, Gordon, thanks. Thank you so much.